Hi, I'm Peter Cowan, the Bee Whisperer. Today I want to go through uh, a lot of these nukes I made last month with the uh, queen cells from the grafting that I did. And I want to get them up to a larger size box uh, so that it's going to be easy to overwinter them. I'm not looking to overwinter them as nukes. I think I've still got time to get them up to 10 frame hives. So that's the plan. So we're going to give them a hand with that right now. So what I have is the uh, nukes here that are gaining some weight. I'm going to put a full size hive in its place, full size deep. Take the feeder off. So we've got we've got one two three two and a half to three frames of bees in here they're a little bit small uh, for transferring but that's what I'm planning to do regardless at the moment so taking a frame here as it, the population is starting to grow now as brood is beginning to emerge we've got brood of all stages here the back filling with syrup um, so I can see they've got young brood filling up the gaps and the older brood should be starting to emerge here now. So that's going to go in the middle. Lots of young brood here. This queen, former queen cell is from a while back. Got lots of young brood there. Frame full of older brood here. A lot of it emerging. treatment I'll still keep in there it's not quite done tiny bit of brood food here so we've got bees on three frames fully I would say and plenty of bees here honey and stuff but we've got plenty of resources about Roughly two frames of brood. What might treatment I've got in there? Almost done, but not quite. Make sure all the bees go into the box. So now there's no quite question that the queen is in here, even though I didn't actually see her. Um, now what I'm going to do is fill up the space with comb, and I'm not going to give them foundation. If I can help it, if I've got the drawn comb, I'm putting the drawn comb in. So I've got a few boxes of it round here. So I know they've got about two frames of honey, about two frames of brood. So they're not going to be short of resources, but I'm still going to feed them. Because what we don't want is any chance of them going hungry at this stage. I want them to have all the fuel they need to rear brood and to make sure that there's uh, all the wax repair that's needed is being done. I will get them, put an inner cover on here right now, put their feeder back on. And that one's ready. Let's see how some of the others are coming along. I looked in these hives about five, six days ago to see 
how well they'd taken. And we got 16 out of the original, I think it was 19 that I had going here, plus this one 20 or so. That looks nice. So even more bees in this one. So these are coming along nicely. bit of fresh resources there. It's going to go in the middle, of course. So just like you do it in the spring, you transfer them in the same order they came out. Here's our beautiful little queen. Storing pollen. Got young brood here. Eggs along here. Honey on that side. So we've got some food resources. Frame of brood, emerging brood. I came along to these smaller of these colonies and added the frame of brood here and there. Got some emerging brood here. So the smaller ones, I've shaken more bees in and added some emerging brood. So we're hopefully having three or more frames of bees going into each hive here. So it's a good two frames of brood in here. Let me finish off these mite treatments. They're old, but still during their lifetime. Dragging off that uh, bald faced wasp right there. They're working on that. Buggers trying to get in. Yeah. Might go amiss. So it's a little bit less work for them to have to do. These hives are coming along nicely. As we're still in dearth, I may yet reduce the entrances of these hives a little bit. But even with these nukes here, I've been seeing very little robbing from one hive to another, uh, which is a very good sign. Um, but I have to keep an eye open for it when you've got the difference between small hives and big hives in the same yard. The small ones can always become victim to the larger ones in their search for food because the smaller ones are an easier target. This will be a much bigger entrance, but I will reduce these entrances somewhat to make it harder uh, for any, for easier for them to defend, harder for any to rob. We're getting a few bull-faced hornets, but that's not a major, major issue. They're just coming on the outside, getting the syrup that drips initially 
they're not going into the hive so much, but if the entrances are too wide open, we will get robbing from things like hornets and uh, yellow jackets. So far, that's not an issue. Well, let's try and keep it that way. Let's do one more here. See how this one's looking. Plenty of food being consumed. Plenty of bees on it. It's also a good sign. Oh, that looks nice. We we'll move this just to one side. earlier on and uh, they're certainly well on target as we're 10th of August 11th of August right now 10th of August we've still got uh, plenty of time for them to build up um, their first rearing of brood is just coming through now emerging now and as this brood emerges now they're gonna be able to occupy two or three more frames. So we've got some youngish brood here, it's only just getting capped. Plenty more that is capped here, surrounded by eggs. So, and we can see some emerging brood right here. Little head sticking out. So you can see the population is growing nicely. I can see the odd fluffy silvery bee in here as this population grows. Lots of brood on this one, both sides. Looking nice. solid brood pattern here. Coming on nice you see lots of food around the edges, a bit of pollen. We're just getting coming into the time where everything in the hive can start going yellow. We can see the frames are going a bit yellow with goldenrod pollen coming in. Hopefully very soon we're gonna have goldenrod nectar coming in too. And they're drawing a bit of comb, fresh comb here. That's very encouraging considering it's the dirt. Having some comb already drawn, such a godsend. Move everything into the middle. So we've got this hive, we've got more like three frames of brood, frame of honey, frame being worked on. We've added a couple of frames with honey in them and three more frames that are just empty comb. So this colony will be growing very nicely. 
uh, I've got little doubt that by the end of August, this will pretty much be full of bees. And who knows, if we had a, if we had a full honey flow, I could even get a super of honey out of these, these bees. I've seen it before. But uh, right now, my target is just to get them ready for the winter. So if you've uh, done any queen grafting or that sort of thing this summer, hopefully you've had uh, good success. There's different things that you can do with those grafted queens that you make, whether you're starting up a new colony like this or requeening the colony of a hive that you find the characteristics less desirable from. Remember, you can always breed from your strongest and best performing colonies and replace the queens of the uh, colonies that have performed less well or who show characteristics that you don't like, like aggression, not much honey production, less res less quickly building up and things. You can quite simply take the queen cell, put it in those developing hives, and as that queen, you've got a cell protector on it, the bees aren't gonna tear it down. And when that new virgin queen emerges, she comes out, kills the mother queen of that hive, and hey presto, you've got a new, new source of genetics that will lead the future that time. Anyway, I've got a few more hives to do, so I better go on with it. I'm Peter Cowan, the Bee Whisperer. See you next time.